Thank you. Yeah. Straight out the desert. Yeah, I got back from Saudi the day before yesterday. So that was... Yeah, I'm still getting over it, actually. I went on the scales this morning. I've lost nearly a stone in white because, obviously, it's a very dry country. Although I don't I only drink a beer a night. Mm. But I lived on the catering, which was rice and vegetables. I've never eaten as healthy for a week. So you reckon it was that, just being, like, clean and, like, routined? And yeah, I just didn't eat much. I slept most of the time. I probably lost body mass because I was horizontal for the whole time <laughs> I was there. Honestly, they made a video of how much I slept. But, like, I did... Matt said Matt Jones was there the week before, and he said he said it was like quite tough, but all right. But the all right bit was a lie. It was just tough. It was, just <laughs> no, was it really? Mate. Yeah, I got it's there. It's a big deal though, dude. Dakar's massive. Hey, don't isn't get it? me wrong. Yeah, it was overwhelming. Yeah. It was, so I got there and I went to this lush hotel and I was like, here we go. It's all right. Red Bull Motorsports. They know how to do it. <laughs> and then I get a text. We pick you up at five a.m., which is three three a.m. UK time, right? And I was not ready for that. So I walked out the hotel at 5am and left basically all my belongings in there because I was just, I didn't even, cons- well, <laughs> throughout the week I found stuff I'd lost, like chargers, <laughs> cables, shoes, all sorts of shit, everything I left in that room. And then I was in a tent for the week. And then... So what sort of tent are we talking? What sort of like tent oh, setup is it? It was a lush tent. Cushy nice. one. It was a massive one. I had a bloke who followed me from bivouac <laughs> to bivouac, and it was only his job to take the tent down, stick it in a pickup, drive six hours to the next one, put it up. And he was getting there a bit late, and uh, like bizarrely enough, a couple of mornings, I got out of the tent, and he was stood there, like full Arab dude in that dish dash gear, 5.30 in the morning, hello mate. Taking my tent down. Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Ready, ready to yeah. go. Because he knows really... he's got a six-hour drive over sand dunes yeah, to get to the get next bit. Yeah, and I'd go and get on a plane. Bit. So it was like off no. to a plane, internal flight every day for an hour. Like so did it feel like the thing. same room every day then? It kind felt, of. So the bivouac moves all over the place every day <laughs> almost, and it's exactly the same as the last one. Honestly, it, it was... You never... I can't even... Honestly, it took me a whole week to kind of come to terms with the scale of it. So 3,000 people and this bivouac, like the, the cars go out in the morning, the bikes go out, they come back and then they don't stop until probably five o'clock in the morning when the cars yeah. go out. Yeah, like one first night I was there in a tent, I was asleep. And I just like, honestly, people just stand outside your tent, smoking, chatting. I was by bins, three o'clock in the morning, people are just, they're like, hey, chucking stuff. It's like day, 24 hours a day. And twenty yeah, and this this I heard this <laughs> And it's the, and, and all night mechanics are just testing the cars up and down the desert. It's actually like mad max. It's like sleeping on the pits lane of an F1. Insane. <laughs> and then I was scared to put earplugs in because I had to get up at five. 3 a.m. UK time. So the first two nights were tricky. I didn't really sleep much, I don't think. But then I got the earplugs in, made an arrangement with the other presenter that she'd stand outside my tent and roar until I got up. So you know, so then I had a safety You net. had an alarm person. Kind of. That's I solid. One. I needed one. So it's sort of like nomadic existence. It's like yeah. a... It's actually like a travelling uh, yeah, circus. Don't get me wrong. It? Like it, was, it was liberating, actually. Like, cause yeah. there's, there's no alcohol there or anything. It's <laughs> mad week. You know, you got like nothing. A lot of time didn't have phone signal. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was actually. It was without a doubt one of the very maddest things I've ever witnessed and Man. done. Like, and and a, you know, it was amazing. Like, I was wandering around with the drivers, looking at the side by sides. I've met Carlos Sainz, senior and junior, but senior. I followed him since Group B days. I, so I interviewed Carlos Sainz when he got out of that Audi, and the Audi when you saw it in the flesh was like the most unbelievable. I don't even. It's like a massive Tonka toy. Like it's they like are a model. Mad, aren't yeah, they? they're like model cars, but on the scale of a. They're just. It's just actually mad. Yeah. And then the motorcyclists. Do you know the motorcyclists leave a bivouac at three a.m. Really? <laughs> like yeah. Do they actually what yeah. just straight fifth gear and in the Malik <laughs> well they might have two or three hundred mark k to get before they get to the sort of six hundred kilometer stage. You don't know about all that really. So and I said to one of them in the Mali Moto class, which is like honestly a box literally the size of that table, and that's all they have for the week for spares. And they have to come in after riding three hundred k to get to the stage, six hundred and fifty k through the desert on in the special stage off road. You know, no no roads, just dudes. And then they might do another 200k back. Like, honestly, and then they go and put their tent up and work on their bike. What would you put in the box? Just out of interest. As a keen motorcyclist, I'd love to know what, like, I'd 
From my experience, gear shifters go. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the sack. <laughs> Joe, right. there's some rocks sack about. gear shifters. I what mean, would you put in there? I don't, don't even know. know. really. I don't know how they did it. Like, a lot of sleeping gear. But, like, honestly, I said to mate, <laughs> don't you fall asleep on the road then on, in the morning? He was like, yeah, as soon as the sun comes up, he said, and you start seeing it. And, uh, he said, it's a real, yeah, it's, it's like, it's the maddest thing I've ever seen. Honestly, the Did you know anything about it going into it? Like, well, I followed it like on the telly, like I guess, like we all probably have over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I remember. See, remember it from. Remember when Harry Vatanen crashed his car in Paris on the on the uh, prologue when it was Paris Dakar? No. And, yeah, and he, he yeah. had to finish the prologue on free wheel. So yeah, I knew. I, I've always followed it, and then I met Sam Sunderland through Red Bull. Did a show with him, who won it twice now, and he wasn't unfortunately he went out this time with a mechanical. But so I have followed it, yeah, mm. and I've, especially the motorbikes because I can't actually believe how risky it is for the motorcyclist. Like, it's on another level. To, you, you know, you, you've got to be tapped to do it. What are those bikes? They are basically a 450. They are now. That, yeah, that's they new, isn't it? it. That's, yeah, yeah, they limited it. Okay. And they're limited, I think, to 160k. Right. But mate, mate, we had this kid in Tobias <laughs> Ep, um, Epstra, Ep, oh, Episton. What's his last name? Oh, my God. That's that, this must be... No, but it he must be really hard class. with that many people because yeah. you're covering there's so many categories isn't there yeah 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 so yeah. how many groups actually are there uh there's mali moto motorbike and then there's side by side but i think there's two so or three like, different categories of that you've got challenger so they're, they're different sizes are they widths i, I believe and stuff and then oh, there's man, ultimate right, yeah. which is signs and lobe and all those guys. so they're the f1 they're they're literally that's the Out of the gate, they're as fast as an F1 car, aren't they? I they're absolutely imagine. mental. There. I would imagine that. Yeah. Was in, it was the most unbelievable vehicle I've ever set eyes on. Like, honestly, yeah. it, it was just, it's just, like, I just stood and stared at it for like half an hour. I couldn't actually get my head around what oh, I was cool, seeing. Oh, man. Yeah, it was cool, as. And then you got I, the trucks and all, like the lorries. Yeah. And the I, lorries are actually playing their part on the stages. Like, they will get to riders. And I did a big piece on the safety of it and went in the. I went in the sort of the, the the HQ of it, and like every rider's got their number in green while they're going wow, and then it changes to, I think it's blue if they're stopped, and if it goes red, then they they're start out. yeah. Then Paris, like we've also got it, and they contact this HQ in the bivouac, and then they send a heli. And it happened when I was in there, and then mate was like, you might have to leave now. We've got a, an, an, an incident, and they don't know what it is, so it could be someone, you know, it could be bad. Yeah. And uh, and then five minutes later, it was like, it's okay now. The helicopter's landed. We've had eyes on it. And uh, yeah, you can stay, carry on. That incident's taken care of. Look, they've got 15, helico 15 helicopters in the air. 15 helicopters in the air. It's, I, th I feel like for me, it's been on my radar this year, mainly because firstly, Matt went out there, Matt Jones. And yeah. then obviously you were out there. I took over from him. Plus yeah. following Cut a little bit on social media. And I feel like the Dakar has gone all these years without me paying any attention to it. But all yeah. of a sudden this year, I was like, actually, this looks, oh, it's, it feels like to me, it's like the Tour de France. To me, well, it's, it's like, ASO, all, once you ASO, get into it, you're like, oh, wow, like, there's loads going on with this. And like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a world you just don't know anything no, about. No, that's right. And I didn't, honestly, you see the cars in the desert, but the machine behind it, and it's, it's organised by ASO who do the Tour de France. Right. So they do that in the Tour. That's it. We met a doctor that works on both and that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the French, like, it brought home just how mad the French are. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's their event. And it's just, you know, like who who on earth goes, this is all right. And all the trucks there and all the bikes and everything is shipped from, I mean, I don't know where about from America, but you basically drive all your stuff down to Barcelona in November and they own a container ship. And all these cars go on there and everything, bikes go on there and you, you get it out in the desert. So everything there was Euro plated. Boah. And then... They drive it all back to a port there, like Riyadh or something, and off they go again, you know. It was like how much work did you put in before going, like to figure out, you know, you're meeting all these people? Mm, none. Okay. No, none. But but it was it was supposed to be that way actually. Okay. Like, like I spoke to Scott from Cut and he was like, Yeah, I was so it's always quite difficult not difficult, but different, because normally I'm used to hosting. Mm. But I was a guest on this one. Right. Which I like. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. It's great. But I, they actually asked me not, I said, I'll start research. He said, no, 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 ask the oh, questions awesome. on air and find out on air. And, you know, that way you can probably relate to a viewer a bit more. I didn't yeah. want to go in there too knowledgeed up. Yeah. But the wow factor was on another scale, honestly. And I'm, yeah, 
Like, yeah. I need Lost. to catch up with it. I th- it's one of those things that I think I, if I dip my toe in, I'd just become addicted to it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, I'd just yeah, be like, yeah. oh, my God, there's yeah, so much going on. Do it. I've had yeah. it with the tour and with Dakar. Like, certain years I get into it and then I'm That's just right. in. And it's like the more you put in, the more you almost right. yeah. get out. It's like exponential. So I remember watching Dakar and it was like this whole world I hadn't even, yeah, you know, I've no idea about it. But it's out there happening. Yeah. And it's just like massive money and like crazy tech. Like, you talk about the Audi car. That's like electric, and it's cool. like all this sort of stuff that's yeah, happening. Yeah, with a, sort of a, an engine on board to power the batteries that power the wheels. I mean, it was like so it was full electric drive. Yeah, I mean, Carl, honestly, <laughs> Carlos signed. I, I couldn't believe it. He's like they're in there for six hours a day more. All the drivers puke. It's so gnarly. They take all sorts of anti sickness meds because because even them, these professional drivers, ain't used to yeah. one stage in the um, marathon stage, not the marathon stage, excuse me, the chrono stage they called it. They did 650 kilometres of sand dunes, like just sand dunes. So that's just you. Yeah, and he just said you just, just down day. and like, yeah, <laughs> people puke everywhere. The drivers make some ill. And Sainz is 61 years old. I followed him from Group B and then I'm sat in a room with him. Honestly, I shit myself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I had to go and interview him as well. And the hardest thing was stopping the mic shaking. I don't really, really get it. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see it cool. go and I was like, focus. Use the force. That's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I called him King Carlos and said, cheers, mate. Oh, Sound. Yeah, that's right. He was so... After two weeks in that motor, all right, he'd won, so he was in good mood. But when he came in the studio, he was so, so gracious and had time and shook me hand. And, oh, yeah, that's cool, amazing, mate. Amazing. Yeah, he's one of the best drivers on earth. So yeah. it was super cool. And that was his fourth, third try and last try. He said the last bullet with Aldi and they did it. So, amazing. Yeah, mint. Cool yeah, storylines wow. and stuff happening. Yeah, which again, really, it's cool, isn't it? Like happens, but you don't. For me, like you don't know anything about no, it. Was it. Amazing. I was, you know, what a privilege to get at that. That's, yeah, yeah it, was. it was mad. It was mad. Yeah. So sick. Good work. <laughs> what an episode! You did really well. Though. <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. Do you know what? I'll finish it off. What? If you could put some sort of link over my face. Yeah, I can do that. I could put a right? video up on Ollie's face of an episode we think you'll love. Is it on now? There is a subscribe button here on this chair and on my face. Another video we think you'll love. Thank you. We appreciate you. There's nothing in the chair now. Subscribe.